Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number three. This time I'm going to show you how to handle collisions. For this, we are going to write a little 2D billiard simulation. Let's jump right into it. Before we can start coding, we have to look at the math first. Let us assume we have two balls with masses m1 and m2 and velocities v1 and v2. After a collision, they will have new velocities v1 prime and v2 prime. We can compute these new velocities with these two equations. You might ask where the forces and Newton's second law are in these two equations. During a collision, deformations occur which cause repulsive forces that separate objects. For stiff objects, this happens during a very short amount of time. Therefore, we only look at the resulting velocities after this process. I won't derive these equations here, you find derivations in various textbooks. The number e that appears in both formulas is the coefficient of restitution. If set to 0, the collision will be completely inelastic. If set to 1, the collision will be perfectly elastic. This was the one-dimensional case. However, we are interested in the two-dimensional case. Here, the velocities are vectors, not simple numbers. They are not necessarily aligned with the axis through the centers of the ball. Therefore, we need to look a little bit into vector math. We will see that this is very simple. A vector, v, is an entity that has components that are simple numbers. We write a vector in bold face, while simple numbers are written in regular font. We can also write vectors as square brackets containing the components in column form. A 2D vector can represent a point in 2D, as in this example, or an arrow, as for velocities and forces. In order to be able to work with vectors, we need a few vector operations. The first one is scaling. Here, we multiply the vector with a simple number. This is done by multiplying each component by this number. The result is a vector that points in the same direction but has its length changed. We already used this idea to scale forces and velocities by the time step size dt. Another important operation is the addition of two vectors. Here I show an important use case for our simulations. I add the vector v scaled by the time step size dt to the position x. To do this, we simply perform this operation on both components. It couldn't be simpler. Another important operation is vector subtraction. Again, we simply perform the subtraction on both components. An important use case is to compute a vector that points from a point A to a point B. To compute this vector, we simply subtract A from B. Computing the length of a vector is quite easy too. Here we use the Pythagorean theorem. The length is the square root of the sum of the squared components. This holds for any dimension. The length of a vector is written as the vector embraced by two vertical bars. A further important concept are normalized vectors. These are vectors of length 1. We can normalize a vector by scaling it by 1 over its length. Now comes the most important and most beautiful operation, the dot product. I view it as a gift of Seychat, the goddess of mathematics. It's super simple to compute and very useful. The dot product is written as a dot, not a surprise. Its value is a simple number. It is the sum of the products of the components of the two vectors. Now, if we have a vector v and a normalized vector n, then the dot product of the two is the length of the projection of v in the direction of n. We can call this vn. Since it is a simple number, we write it in regular font. The dot product allows us to reduce our 2D problem to 1D and apply the formulas on the first slide. With the dot product, we can also split the vector into two components. One that points in the direction of n and one that is perpendicular to n. In our particular case, we can compute n by normalizing the vector from the center of the ball 1 to the center of the ball 2. Now we are ready to write some code. We start with the HTML skeleton that we developed in the first tutorial. We have a head section where we define a title that will show up in the tab of the browser. And then we have the body section that contains the content of the page. We have a canvas element and a script section that contains all our JavaScript code. 
I described the drawing setup part in the first tutorial as well. Here we define the canvas size and we also define two functions that map physical coordinates into screen coordinates. In the drawing function we now simply clear the canvas. The update function calls simulate and then draw and make sure that it is called again and again. The only statement is the first call of the update function. Now we add some new code after the drawing setup. We first define a class vector2 that contains everything that I described in the slides. The vector2 class has two members x and y. We define them in the constructor. Then we have a set of methods. The first method is set, which copies the content of the vector v to this vector. Then we have the method clone that creates a new vector2 with the content of this vector. The add method adds the vector v to this vector and we can also specify a scaling parameter s. Add vectors adds the vectors a and b and stores the result in this vector. The subtract method subtracts the vector v from this vector and again we can define a scaling s. Subtract vectors subtracts a from b and stores the result in this vector. We also define a method length that computes the length of this vector and a method scale that scales this vector by s. Finally, we define the method dot, which computes a dot product between this vector and the vector v. Now we are ready to define our billiard scene. We first define a class ball. It has four attributes, a radius, a mass, a position and a velocity and we specify all of them in the constructor. We only have one method, which is the simulate method. As before, we add gravity times dt to the velocity and velocity times dt to the position. In the struct physics scene, we define all the information that we need for our simulation. We define gravity, the time step size, a world size, a Boolean variable post, which tells us whether our simulation is paused or not, a set of balls and the restitution. In the setup scene function, we define all these values. We define the number of balls on the screen. Then for each ball, we define a random radius, mass, position and velocity. And then we create a new ball object with these four properties and add it to the balls array in the physics scene. The draw function is simple. First we clear the canvas and then we iterate through all the balls. For each ball we render a circle with the ball's position and the ball's radius. Now comes the interesting part. We define a function handle ball collision, which takes a ball 1 and a ball 2 and a restitution. First we compute a direction vector that points from the position of ball 1 to the position of ball 2. We compute its length. And then if the length is larger than the radius of ball 1 plus the radius of ball 2, then the two balls are not colliding and we can simply return. If they are colliding, we normalize the direction vector dear by scaling it by 1 over d. Next we compute a correction vector to push the balls apart. The distance is the sum of the radii minus the current distance of the balls divided by 2. We move the balls along the direction dear for the ball 1 by minus core and for the ball 2 by plus core. Next we update the velocities as I showed you on the first slide. We first use the dot product to compute the part of the velocities along the direction dear. Then with the masses m1 and m2 we can compute the new velocities exactly as on the first slide. Finally we change the velocity components along the direction dear. We subtract the current velocity and add the new velocity for both balls, ball 1 and ball 2. Handling the wall collisions is simpler. We simply clamp the ball's position against the world bounds and if necessary reflect the velocities. Here is the simulate function. We iterate through all the balls in the physics scene. For each ball we call simulate. Then we use a nested loop to check all possible ball collisions. This can get very slow. If we have a thousand balls we have to check one million collisions. In a later tutorial I will show you how to speed this up using spatial hashing. Finally we call handle wall collision for each ball. Now let's check how this looks in a browser.
So now we have it, our billiard scene with 20 balls of varying radii and masses. I could look at this forever. But before we stop, we're going to add one more thing. We want to add a button to restart the scene and a slider to specify the restitution. For this, I add two elements before defining the canvas. The first one is a button that, when clicked, calls setup scene. The next is a slider for which we define a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10. We also specify an ID to access it below. There's one additional thing we have to add at the very bottom of the document. With this statement, we specify what happens when the restitution slider is changed. In this case, a function is called. In the function, we update the restitution of the physics scene based on the value of the slider. So now let's look how this looks in the browser. So here's our final result. We now have a restart button that lets us recreate the scene and the restitution slider. Let's set it to zero. Now, as you can see, there's no bouncing at all. What you can also see is that energy is lost and this is expected. As usual, I provide a link in the description to a page where I provide the HTML documents of all the tutorials. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to write a pinball machine.